15 and 0, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Jake, aka Tag, and today we're back in action with the Battle Healer Challenge. Hopefully, we can go jump right into the action, unlock ourselves a Battle Healer, and see how strong it is as a card. I've been hearing that it's incredibly busted, so I can't wait to see it for myself. Let's go jump right into the action and assert some dominance. We picked Wizard because it kills minions. Definitely takes skeletons for a faster cycle. And I think we go and snag... Oh, man, this is tough. I think we have to snag Lightning here. It's just because we don't want him to kill the Wizard. And we'll take Goblin Giant. Alright, so the zap isn't going to give him any value, but if he gave him lightning, he was going to be able to kill our wizard really easily. So that would have been bad for me. Okay, get to test the battle healer. Let's snag it, guys. Let's snag a quick and easy W. There we go. Goblin Giant battle healer. Can we do it? Can we assert the dominance? Pray push at the river. How strong is this card right now? Let's see it in action. So far, it's healing up everything. Alright, we're vibing. Alright, that's actually pretty clean. I can't believe this. So we're going to be able to take the tower just spamming it at the river. That's nutty. I'm able to go in for an ice golem to go and pull everything into the wizard. And then I have skeletons back in cycle. He's going to probably zap them. But we'll see if we can snag a very nice defense here. I'm going to try to drop the skeletons close by the lava hound pups. So then the prince goes close by. So then it's all going to get splashed. And obviously we come out ahead here. I can even go for another goblin giant since we have the wizard still alive. And I want to get that in front. And I don't think he has a way of killing it. I really don't, man. <laughs> this is so sad for him. He's dropping a Lava Hound right into the face of adversity. Right into the crucible of the Fireballs of Wizard. Oh my gosh, dude. You're getting eaten alive. That is a snack and a half. So, we're able to go for a Battle Healer here on top of the Prince. And probably going for a Wizard because he doesn't have Lightning. and He's only got Zap. Oh, baby! Give it to Daddy. Wait, it just ate an entire Prince hit. It ate an entire Prince hit. And it's still alive. Can we get the Ice Golem down in front of it? No, it's going to get hit first. What? That Ice Golem was not in a situation where it should have been targeted first. But I'm not going to complain. That was really lucky for me. We still take the tower. Battle Healer has way too much value, man. It ate an entire Prince hit. And it still gave us value on offense. This card is beyond broken. First impressions of it playing it for the very first time. And I can say that I'm not disappointed in the card's potential, but I am disappointed in the balance team here because it's a little bit too busted. You can't always get it correct, though, so, you know, it, uh, I, I can't flame them for it, but, yeah, this is massively overtuned. It is way too strong of a card. So, yeah, they, uh, hopefully we'll be hotfixing this or changing it soon. It's a little bit too strong. And there isn't really much counterplay to it if you have melee cards targeting it. As you guys saw, a Prince charging, one of the strongest five Elixir cards in the game, charging at its maximum potential of damage, was not able to kill it. That's broken. In my opinion, that's not fair. So we're able to go in for a Rail Giant. We're healing up our wizard. Oh my gosh. How is this? Oh my gosh. Just, I can't wait to use this in Golem decks. If I just use a Golem with Night Witch... Flop it down. How does anyone beat it? How does anyone beat this in a real goal matchup? This is going to be beyond busted to test it out in regular decks. I can't wait. So we're going to take Ice Spirit over Goblins for a faster cycle. Arrows are busted now, so we got to snag them. And because we have arrows, I think it's going to be better for us to take a win condition that he probably can't kill with his small spell of Earthquake. So we're going to go and snag the Goblin Barrel. And let's go and take a Giant so it's able to tank for the Goblin Barrel. I really like our deck construction. We're able to arrow his rascals, and then he has no way of killing our goblin barrel at all. I think that they should count the earthquake as a big spell because if your opponent has goblin barrel and you have earthquake, it's one of the worst possible selections for you. So that's why it was really beneficial for me to take that. So we don't really have that great of a deck though because we have elixir collector and we have royal giant. It's going to be an interesting game. I'm going to go for giant and goblin barrel because I know that this game has to be a dynamic and I have to get a lot of damage here. So the Giant's tanking, as you guys saw, and then we're able to get a very spicy arrows. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's go. We take the tower in one fell swoop. Tower gone. Mission completed. So Executioner after the nerf isn't near as good as it used to be, but it's still enough to clean up these very obnoxious rail hogs. I think we go Ice Spirit here just so the Barbarians don't clench onto our tower. What do we want to do? Two minutes remaining in this game. I think we Elixir Collector eat up. 
a little bit of damage, and then... Yeah, I don't know. I think that we just wait for him to make a big push. He's got the Battle Healer, so he's got the OP card here. Still not going to be an issue, though. So, a lot of these games are basically won in the draft, and a lot of times. If you're able to draft correctly better than your opponent, you can just win games. Oh my gosh, it's not dying! Can we arrows and kill it? If this doesn't die the Valkyrie, it's beyond busted then. I don't know how they balanced it. It almost died to just Goblin Giant, and it was going to heal up again. Oh no. Dude, imagine the Battle Healer killing that, healing up his entire push. That is such a punishing mechanic. He's going to be able to take the tower, and we're going to have to fight our way tooth and nail to get back into this game. Maybe we can go in for like a giant and then have a tank again part two. We don't have arrows, so that's bad, but I can cycle back with an ice spirit. Giant is tanking, and he's going to give us some spicy arrows interaction with hitting the bar putt, the tower, and the goblin gang. He's dropping earthquake on defense. Yo, we just completely ruined his chances of winning the game as soon as we gave him Earthquake. A lot of people don't really know how to use it. It would have been better off just not cycling the card at all. He did get the brain dead card of the Battle Healer though, so he doesn't even need to know how to play that correctly to just use it. You just plop it down behind a tank and then you're fine. Just let it do its thing. So it looks like we probably want to three crown him. I don't think I'm able to defend that, but there's no way he's able to defend as well. So don't tunnel vision on defending, guys. If you're able to three crown, just do it. Don't waste your time. Don't waste their time. Just go for that bread, collect that snack, and get that just scrumptious three crowns. As you guys saw, when he dropped 10 elixir on the left-hand side, I knew that the game was over. I could just go and three crown him, and that's what we did. I feel like all of these games are going to be three crowns because a lot of the times they just overcommit once or they pick the wrong decks, and they can't beat me if they do that. So I'm going to take Battle Healer, obviously, because it's a very strong card. We're going to take Bandit so we can deal with the Dark Prince easily, so we stop its charge. And I think that Royal Giant is probably one of the best win conditions, but because we have Battle Healer, I think that Goblin Giant is really strong with it since it's able to heal it up. And we're definitely going to go and snag the Skeleton Barrel over the Elixir Golem since we already have the Goblin Giant. There's no point in taking another win condition that's heavy like that. All right, man. We're going to see what's up. We have Magic Archer and Princess and Minions. Holy crap. These are the cards that we wanted to see. This is a really good start for me, man. I'm psyched to play this game. Having this type of start, having this type of hand, having units that actually attack, and we're seeing two units that don't attack from him. This is going to be a miserable game for him. Oh my gosh. Yes, you're going to get flying machine damage, but the counter push is going to be astron astronomical on your left-hand side. Like, I don't know why I was going to say astronomy, but I tried to say astronomical, and I said astronomy, so we're going to deal with it, guys. We're going to go for an astronomy push on the left-hand side, because that totally makes sense. We're blasting off to the moon, and we're going to three crown him. This game's already over. He took a tower. It doesn't matter. I don't care. We have a goblin giant. We have minions. We have a battle healer. No, we have two battle healers. Oh, my gosh. And we have a magic archer. So the astronomy push is too strong, guys. You got to nerf the astronomy push. GG, well played. And peace out, Girl Scout. When you make mistakes like that, obviously, you're going to get punished. You bet your biscuits that the game is over. Fastest three crown ever. <laughs> GG, well played. Peace out and good luck in the next one, Chief. So that was really funny. He just dropped a whole bunch of cards that only targeted buildings and then expected me not to take his towers when we had a 10 elixir advantage. I don't really know what he was expecting there, but dominance was asserted undoubtedly. Astronomy! <laughs> so we're gonna grab minions just because they're a better card than fire spirits. You give us utility over time instead of just a one use, one hit. Definitely want poison, it's better than log. And of course we're snacking battle healer. All right, so he's got Miner, he's got Log, he's got Dark Prince. So he hasn't had really bad cards, but... Oh, man. This is what I was wanting to test. Golem plus the Battle Healer. I'm down, dude. I'm down to go, like, Laser Golem and kite your spam into us. Okay, we're just going to sack that tower then. We're not going to get through ground. Just drop our Mega Minion so we don't get through ground and we're fine. I think we just spam him here, dude. Double lane aggression with uh, Elixir Golem plus Mega Minion on the right. And then left hand side with Minions and Golem. Guys, it's just different iterations. You got the Golem on the left hand side with the Minions. And you got the Mega Minion with the Elixir Golem. Both Golems, both Minions. It's just different flavors of ice cream, man. So we're going to be able to take both powers too. That was hilarious, man. Oh my gosh. Dominance is asserted undoubtedly. Even though... Uh, it was probably a bad play starting off the game with Golem. I didn't even care. Because we had Elixir Golem to kite units opposite lane. We just didn't account for him to have a 
very interesting balloon. So, was yeah, balloon he was able to make magic happen. Otherwise, uh, we were chilling no matter what else he dropped. I think this is just one of those times that we counter push and kill him. Like, I don't think he's fine. <laughs> I think he's in a really bad spot. Obviously, the wizard's not going to be able to kill that in time, but wizard's going to give us a nice counter push if we go in for an elixir golem in the middle, in the pocket. The mega minion should stay alive because the tower should be targeting the elixir golem instead. And then the elixir golem takes the tower. We can go for a battle healer to heal up our wizard. Oh, it's not going to heal up the wizard. Okay. Well, it's going to at least independently heal up itself. And then the uh, elixir golemites are going to do a lot of damage to the tower. We're just going to three crown him, actually. That was hilarious, dude. Why are we three crowning everyone? It just feels like no game is close. No one is safe when we have the battle healer. Everyone will be conquered. Everyone will be get three crowns asserted all over them. GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. We really haven't lost a single game yet, and I don't plan on losing any. Eight and oh, baby. Let's get it. So Magic Archer is one of the best cards in the game right now. We're not going to take a Archer's because we know, hey, if he's going to have arrows, we're kind of screwed. Wow, we have really good deck right now. Ooh, I'm going to take Inferno Tower just so he doesn't screw me. So this seems weird taking Inferno Tower with Golem, but it's much better for him to not have the Inferno Tower. Otherwise, he has Inferno Tower on our win condition and we're kind of screwed, so not good. Sometimes it's better to screw over your opponent instead of getting the most optimal hand and the most optimal card cycle. So let's go in for a Magic Archer and see what we can do. If he's going to Graveyard, it's probably not going to be too bad for us since we have Ice Golem, we have Wizard, we have Magic Archer, and we have Snowball. I think we're fine. Battle Healer doesn't do too much damage. It just heals up the Girl Rascal, which does a lot. But I think we're in a good spot. I can go in for probably Wall Breakers here. So then he has to spam stuff early. So the Magic Archer is able to kill it. Yeah, so these this wizard is going to do so much damage. Magic Archer is piercing through, hitting the Archers. And if he had arrows, it would have been uh, pretty scary. But fortunately, he doesn't. Arrows do so much damage now. Even against people that don't have archers, they're still worth it. It's crazy, right? Came from one of the worst cards in the game to one of the best. I still haven't found a single opening to go in for any golem, so we just have to chill here. Oh, wait. I can golem now. I can eat some damage and golem. Because the magic archer put in so much work. That's what I'm talking about, guys. Magic archer, it's a pseudo win condition. It also gives you a lot of utility on defense, too, because it pierces through and does damage to all the bait cards. We can just wizard here and I'm fine. I'm not going to get uh, tower lost here, so. That's completely cool. It's completely cool. Maybe I can ice golem so we can body block for the wizard. It's hard to say. It'll be more difficult for him to kill the wizard now, I think. Maybe we're going to be able to push it off the wizard. Uh, not quite. But the golem's getting so much damage. Then we get spear goblins here. It was attacking. Yeah. It's not attacking the golem, so. We're in a really good spot. This golem's going to explode on the tower. It's going to be forced to go in for battle healer soon again. And actually, let's just go for a golem. Protect our magic archer. Go in for a giant snowball. So one hit of the magic archer plus the snowball obliterates it. So even though that battle healer does a lot of sustain, if we do all the damage at once, it doesn't matter because the sustain isn't fast enough. And then the golem should... Ooh, it doesn't explode on the tower. That's really bad for me. We just need to stack up as many magic archers as possible at the river. And I think we can win off of that. That's one of my favorite plays when you have draft challenge. Because, guys, sometimes your win condition is just going to be complete trash or you're not going to have proper support for it. So the Magic Archer is a pseudo win condition that is able to get damage regardless. It's allowing you to win the game. I'm going to go for Golem here. Wallbreaker should both connect. And he could Graveyard, but it doesn't matter. He has to defend this Golem. You have to. There's no other option, dude. You can't go for Graveyard. Well, you kind of have to go for Graveyard, but you're going to lose the tower. I want to be a bad person and go for a snowball so that he doesn't take the tower. <laughs> oh, man. I feel kind of bad for doing that, but I just wanted the pristine, clean victory. No towers taken from our opponent. A 1-0 victory. Undoubtedly going to be a 2-0 if there was one extra second there. So we're 9-0 here. Hopefully we can get some battle heroes from this chest. Come on, give it to daddy. Okay, 43. We take that. We take that. That is pretty clean. So definitely going to take giant and ice spirit over fire spirits and balloons just because they're better cards. More reliable win conditions, and heck, man. We got the Battle Healer again. How many games in a row have I selected that as my card with Wizard? I feel like the game algorithm is just broken and it's giving me the same cards over and over again. I've gotten Wizard and Battle Healer every single game, it feels like. 
Anyway, we got a game against Randy. Let's make Randy rage. We're gonna go in for an Ice Spirit here. We're gonna see what's up. We're gonna see what's good. And he's gonna go in for the Dankest of Princess. So we'll just Battle Healer here and we'll chill. You can't kill that. There's no way. It's just staying alive forever, sir. I wonder if we go in for a Giant here just so the Battle Healer doesn't die to the Fire Spirits. And then we can maybe go in for a Wizard. It's probably gonna drop something right on top of the Battle Healer. So we wanna surprise him with a Wizard. I was hoping they would drop like minions or something. Okay. We could probably go for bats. Giant plus bats? Is that the wave? It definitely is the wave. Bats are going to get damage on the tower. Giant's going to get a hit now. That's unfortunate for him. And then we don't have to deal with the Valkyrie. Okay, so since we have Tombstone and we have Battle Healer and Wizard, I don't think it can break through. Since we have Tombstone in particular, I think that our defensive capabilities are very, very stout. So I want to go cycle my Battle Healer first, just so I'm able to retain HP on my Tombstone so it doesn't decay over time. We'll go for a tombstone here. Last possible second. As the golem's crossing the river, we're able to pull it, then drop our wizard really far away. So then if he poisons, it doesn't matter. And notice how he poisons, and he doesn't hit anything. It's actually just flaccid. Doesn't do anything at all. <laughs> Battle healer staying alive in the face of poison and a dark prince. Doesn't even care. It kind of just laughs at it. Stop tickling me, says the battle healer. And then it counter pushes and then takes your tower. So yeah, GG, man. There's not much you can do here. The bats are just going to thrive on the tower, and he's going to go for a Valkyrie, but the wizard doesn't die, the battle healer doesn't die, and the game's over. I feel like that interaction right there showcases how freaking broken the card is. If you place a Valkyrie down on top of a squishy wizard, it should die. The wizard should die. There is no doubt in my mind that that is a broken interaction. <laughs> the battle healer just ruined this guy's day. No, GG, well played, and peace out, Girl Scout. This deck proved to be very dominant. GG, well played, and good luck in the rest of your challenge. I hope that this guy isn't just completely ruined by me, because if you look, his name is not star level. He doesn't have the battle pass, and he just ran face first into a battle healer. I feel kind of bad snagging that win away from him. Anyway, we'll move on to the next one, and we'll keep asserting dominance. Definitely go and snag the Prince right now. I think he's better than Lumberjack. And because we gave him Executioner, we have to take Rocket. Night Witch is so strong. Gonna take that for sure. If I get Golem or Elixir Golem, we're chilling. I don't even care if I get Battle Healer since I got Night Witch. Don't even care, man. Yeah, we got Golem. Oh my gosh. Exactly what I asked for, man. And he's gonna go for Bandit early on. Oh my gosh, this makes me happy. Because now he doesn't have Bandit to mitigate the charge of the Prince. So we're in a great spot. And he's gonna go drop 5 Elixir. So we have 3 Elixir advantage right now. Because he dropped 5 Elixir and he dropped... The bandit as well, so five for five. It doesn't matter. They're not going to give him much value. And we're going to be able to go in for a golem here. He's not going to have tornado, right? So this is fine. We'll see what he does. Should not be able to kill everything. That should at least be able to get some damage here. I could rocket this, but the battle healer doesn't die to rocket at full HP, by the way. So I don't want to rocket it, really. I'd rather just go in for mini Pekka. I'm going to wait for the skeletons to spawn on top of the bandit. Okay, that didn't really work. I thought that that would work. Anyway, we can just go for mini Pekka right on top. Not going to be too bad. Mini Pekka should be able to kill the battle healer despite it being overpowered. And because he used his uh, bandit, I think we want to go get counter push with this witch. I think it's worth it because he used his fireball as well. He's got guards, unfortunately, but he's going to lose his tower if he doesn't have bandit back in cycle. Even if he does, skeletons are spawning, so that's game. GG, dude. This is why it's so important to draft correctly, even if you don't play perfectly throughout the entirety of the game, like the start of the game was bad for me. But because I took the Witch over the Executioner, we were able to make a stellar counter push and just take his tower. Very, very important to draft correctly. So I'm going to rocket this. So it doesn't get damage. It's pretty important just to nullify that if I can. Negative one Elixir trade, but I'm about it. It's fine. Definitely about it. I was waiting. I was trying to hold it to the last possible second to hopefully get a fireball from our opponent. Because sometimes if you just hold, then your opponent will be like, oh, he's not going to do anything. He's just going to let the Night Witch, like, kill the Ram Rider. And if he thought that, maybe he would fireball to push it even further away. So then the snare of the Ram Rider would give him even more value. But unfortunately, he didn't fall for our trap card. So he's going to continue to spam into us. This is really good because I can just go and drop all my stuff here. I can go drop Mini Pekka, I can drop my Prince, not in alignment of the Executioner because he doesn't have Tornado. And then this spam is just probably going to end the game. 
So Golem is one of the best cards that you could ever select as a win condition in draft game mode, just because you just spam things behind it and it always gives value, no matter what. And a lot of times people don't have the best deck selection to counter the Golem, right? Because they're not going to have Inferno Tower, they're not going to have Executioner plus NATO. If they have Inferno Tower, they probably don't have supporting cards for it. And if they have Executioner, they probably don't have Tornado. So GG, well played and peace out, Girl Scout. Pleasure playing against you and asserting dominance with a juicy three crown. So now we are cruising up, man. I think that's like 13-0 or 14-0. Yeah, 13-0. We're unstoppable. It's too bad that this is like not going to give us any of the battle healers. It's a rare card and we're getting epics. Dude, it's too bad they didn't just give us a spicy rare chest there instead. I want to go for minion horde because I don't know how many win conditions I'm going to get and goblin barrel is not ideal to pick if you have like five other win conditions and no other defensive capabilities. So this is really good. We can give him flying machine that we can just drop our minion horde right on top and we're chilling. And I think we want to go take goblin giant just as a source of direct damage to his tower. That's going to be really nice. Not direct damage, but actually as a win condition, right? We don't have a win condition on our deck yet. Hey, we got Barbaro, baby! Okay, I missed one of the goblins, but it doesn't matter. What do we want to do? He's going to be a little bit sad that we have Barbaro and we gave him Goblin Barrel. This couldn't have been any better for me. Maybe I go in for like a spicy dark goblin here so we're able to kill the fly machine because it's going to lock onto the prince instead. We timed that really well. Maybe I'm able to go for a battle healer here. And then make sure that we're going to be able to keep the Dark Goblin alive even longer. Oh, baby. If we Miner in front, I'm pretty sure the Battle Healer heals it. I'm confident. I'm very confident in this situation that we've won. The Battle Healer is still alive! She can't die! Oh my gosh! That is not fair, dude. Holy crap. Did you guys just see that interaction? Fireball on top of the Battle Healer and the Miner. Stay alive. She's still alive! Oh my god. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Actually insane. This card is not fair. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah, he's an angry panda. He's not happy. I'm gonna go Goblin Giant here, just snag a quick and easy W. Get that 15 and 0. And uh, since we have Prince... Oh, okay. Alright, alright. I think we have to play a little bit more cautious now since he's got Inferno Dragon. The counter push could be a little bit more difficult to deal with since that is a problem. But I still think we're fine. We can go Battle Healer and Minion Horde here. And I'm pretty sure we're fine. Even if he decides to kill the uh, Battle Healer with like... He can't spell it really, right? There's really no way that he can kill it. What am I talking about? Decides to kill the Battle Healer. That'd be a great decision, dude. Just throw down everything you have. Your entire kitchen sink at it. See if it does damage. Probably won't. Just go for a Dark Goblin. It'll be able to snipe the Fisherman. The Fish Boy is going to town. Sayonara. You're leaving for quite a while, sir. And then we can go and just wait. I probably can take his right-hand side, so I don't really want to spend more elixir than I need to. Let's go for our goblin giant on the right. And wait and see what he does. He's going to go in for rare miter, so we can just ice spear on top of it to stop its charge. Really nice for me. And then battle healer and barbaro. I think that's further back. Oh, it wasn't. All right. Well, better safe than sorry. I thought it was further back. He does get a charge off on us, so that's a little bit unfortunate, but it's still really good. Going to be 15-0, guys. There's nothing you can do about it. And we're walking with a very clean W. He's going to try to take the other side. I don't really understand that one, but... We can just Ice Spirit. He's going to Fireball, trying to get that on top. Not happening, buddy. We can probably just 3-crown him with that... I don't even know. Can he stop this? Goblin Giant? If he takes the left-hand side, he just gets 3-crown on the right. Pretty confident about that. I can just go in for a Barb Barrel here. Ice Spirit, and GG. Barbarrel didn't come down in time to stop the flying machine, but it didn't really matter. There was no way for him to get the Goblin Barrel damage in time, so... 15-0, baby! That's what I'm talking about. Did you guys see that minor interaction with the healer at the start? That was really crazy. It feels like it should be a legendary card, and it feels like it needs an emergency nerf. So that's my initial impressions of the card. 15-0 in the challenge. Pick it every single time. Pick your wizards. Pick your golems and make sure you do not pick the archers over a ranged splash damage unit, whether it's magic archer, wizard, witch, always pick those instead. As you guys saw, if you follow my tips, you'll have some great success and you'll probably collect an easy 15 and 0.